Thank you. So we were talking in the van for a good long while. That's why we have such a good rapport now. Right? Yeah. So um, can you just, but obviously a lot of people who are watching the beginning of the scope will just be starting right with this. So right. Can you, we probably should introduce yourself and your act and just to give us like a little couple sentences about you know, where you're from and oh, sure. you know, where you've been lately. And yeah, something, yeah. Something like yeah, that. I'm Matt Lorenz is the suitcase junket. Um, based in Leverett here in Western Mass. Been in Western Mass for a while, over 10 years now. And uh, yeah, I've been traveling all around the country, all around the globe a little bit. Uh, suitcase junketing, I guess. And it's, it's literally, you're sitting on a suitcase right now. Mm -hmm. You've got a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how the act shaped up in terms of what you play, which are is sort of a unique collection of things and uh, yeah. how, that, how that shaped up. Yeah, so I started foot drumming when I was with Rusty Bell, um, and I basically just built a box and had a sort of boom and a chick on it, so right heel, left heel. And then I no noticed that my left foot was moving a lot, so I put a washboard under it and started getting this kind of rick crack kind of sound, and then that got fired from the band just because of um, general, I don't know, laziness, I guess. It, w it wasn't getting used enough, so I started adding these little can drums. So yeah, right heel is hitting the suitcase, right toe is on hi-hat. So sort of lone holdout of traditional drumming. Um, right toe's also got this box of bones and silverware for that nice sort of uh, voodoo crunch. <laughs> On the left toe is a baby shoe hitting a gas can for the sound of innocence. Um, on the left heel is a cook pot for spaghetti and such. And then also left heel is circular saw blade, which helps us mark the ends of rounds, among other things. And this guitar was pulled out of a dumpster at my alma mater, Hampshire College. Don't throw away guitars, kids. Um, <laughs> it's a bad place, bad place for guitar to be. Um, but there was some mold in it, so I cleaned the mold out and kind of fixed it up. And it's um, it's always been kind of a one-trick pony, but um, now it's got two or three. You seem you seem like a multi-trick pony. Mm. As an act. <laughs> a lot of it's kind of analog. There's not. We were talking uh, a little while ago about. Not so much looping, programming, right, this right. is really just sort of like backpack it in, yeah. play it live. Yeah. In the beginning there was no amps and it was I could actually walk into a place with just one trip. Yeah. What a the good old days. What's the oldest piece that we're looking at? Just that goes back for you sentimentally or otherwise? Um Is I, that your baby shoe, for example? Well yeah, it is actually. Oh, it is. Um <laughs> yeah, so and actually the drum that it's hitting, I think, is the oldest the, the, yeah, it's the piece in the band that's been with me the longest. It was, uh, and actually the baby shoe wasn't my idea. I was recording um, at Signature Sound Studio with Mark Thayer down in Connecticut with Rusty Bell a bunch of years ago. And we were trying to get a good sound out of this. It was back when it had its original bottom on it. And I think we wound up putting a sock on it or something and it sounded fine. But Mark was like, you know, Matt, uh, I think a baby shoe would really, would really do the trick there at that you know, big service area. I was like, wow, so creepy. Great, I'll do it. Went home. I was like, Mom, you got any old baby shoes? And sure enough, she got she gave me gave me a pair that Kate and I both wore. And they're kind of I don't know, we're '80s babies, and this looks like it was made in the '60s. So I almost or I, I don't know. You might not have been the first baby. In the yeah, it's, it goes back. And this baby shoe has played through. I think it's on its seventh or eighth piece of metal. It just keeps destroying them, like cracks down the middle. I don't know how it does it. It's just it's got like one little crack in it, and other than that, it's just pounding away. Awesome. Who knows? That's got some magic soul. Uh, and you've got, just speaking of uh, over time, you have several albums recorded, but you have a new one coming out. Yeah. You want to just say something about that and how that sure. sound is kind of related to or builds off of kind of what you've been going for in the past? Yeah, yeah. So the, the process is pretty similar. Went into the studio with the pile. Um, I did add a few things for this next album that I don't have with me. A little keyboard uh, goes here. So if you want to use your imagination, that's, that, that's good. <laughs> That's good advice in general, actually. Just good. Um, and then over here is going to be this sort of little pulley thing um, that basically drops two pairs of shoes onto that suitcase, and it makes this nice sort of rump kind of sound. Um, but that still, I'm still working out how to do that live. Um, so yeah, I went in the studio and basically recorded a bunch of new songs. Um, you know, they're kind of pushing in one direction towards more of a, a pop, you know, bigger sound with the keyboard and stuff, and then. Um, and then digging also, uh, digging into the, the Americana tradition that I've sort of been st steeping in for a while. It's wild to be looking at 
one guy playing so many things? Does it feel like you're playing right, about the right amount of stuff? Like as you as you keep, <laughs> as you keep going down the road, are you? Gonna I mean, I joke about there being a big space here, so that's getting you know that's getting filled in. Um, this elbow moves a lot when I play, and nothing happens, so that's sort of annoying. I think I'll probably tie something to that at some point. <laughs> Literally tie something to your elbow. Probably or like you know, put on an elbow pad and have something to smash. I don't know. You know, the idea sort of is, is, you know, I'm making all these motions anyway. You know, like when I was, ta you know, tapping your feet, playing a song or something like, let's get sounds out of it. So if there's any sort of incident, you know, the next time you see me, I'm going to have like a head harness, you know, I'm going to be like, like a spider in a web or something. <laughs> one hope, one can hope. One can only hope. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for coming and joining us for sessions. Thanks for having me. Yeah.